What's up everybody, welcome to 6 Minute Horror Movie Reviews, where I review a typically lesser known horror movie in about 6 minutes. Spoilers will be contained throughout this video, so if you have not seen this movie, or if you wish to not have the events of this movie spoiled for you, click off this video. But if you're okay with spoilers, let's begin. Today's film is Doom Asylum, released in 1987, written by Rick Marks and directed by Richard Friedman. This film is a self-aware comedy slasher, but is it any good? Let's take a look. Our movie starts out with a man and woman named Judy and Mitch who are kissing, drinking, and joyriding in a convertible. Mitch is an attorney who apparently just won a million dollar lawsuit. He and Judy are talking about how they're going to leave their lives behind, including her child, and go live a life of luxury with the money. Well, before you know it, they've crashed. He's fucked up beyond all recognition, and she is dead. They do pronounce him dead upon arrival, but despite looking like he crawled out of a Return of the Living Dead sequel, he's still alive. He awakes during his autopsy and attacks his doctors. Typically, I like to give a play-by-play -play of all the important events of a movie, but since there aren't really any important events outside of the murder spree that eventually follows, there really isn't much of a story, so I can't really do much except introduce the setting and uh, <clears throat> characters. Our story begins 10 years later when we follow Judy's daughter Kiki, her boyfriend Mike, who she creepily calls mom as some sort of coping mechanism for losing her mother. And yeah, it's super fucking weird. Along for the ride are their friends Darnell, Jane, and Dennis. They're heading down the exact same stretch of road where her mother died in the joyride. Now, there are rumors that there is a deranged murderer who resides at the old abandoned asylum, so naturally, a group of kids with no self-preservation instincts whatsoever decide that that is a great spot to hang out. Upon arrival, they hear what is easily the shittiest three-piece, all-female, uh, punk band? I mean, the music is punk and attitude, sure, I'll give them that, but it's just indiscernible noise. I say that as someone who's a fan of extreme metal and punk. I don't really know what you call this other than dog shit, but anyways, the band is called Tina and the Tots. Long story short, Darnell fries their amps, and now the two groups are at odds with each other. Except for Darnell himself and the Tina and the Tots drummer who apparently like each other, for no other reason that I can tell, I, I guess, because they're the only black characters in the movie? Fuck, I don't know. Try to make sense out of this script and you'll end up getting a fucking migraine. Anyways, from here on out, it's all just bad acting and a lot of filler. Like the girl band throwing condoms full of water on the main group from the roof. Playing games on the roof. Hanging out on the roof. I mean, these people only really serve as meat to be slaughtered by our really goofy killer. One by one, he kills them off in different ways. The only thing, and I really mean the only fucking thing this movie has going for it, is some of the effects on the kills. My favorite kill is easily the communist keyboard player who gets her face submerged in acid and melted. Our killer likes to tell jokes and make puns after he kills his victims, so get ready for that. But in the end, it comes down to Mitch, who is our deranged, scarred killer, and Kiki, who is saved because she resembles her mother Judy, the woman who Mitch loved. And yes, our final girl is a girl named Kiki, who kills Mitch by stabbing him in the eye a couple of times with the handle of her mother's mirror. Christ, let's just skip all of this and get to the ranking. I'd give Doom Asylum a 3 out of 10. Some people love movies like this that are so obviously bad that it's part of the charm, but I myself am in the camp that for a movie to be so bad that it's good, it usually can't be in on the joke. It can't be self-aware that it's bad. It has to be bad on accident. It can't be intentional. And it's worth noting that I'm giving this a score of 3 out of 10, despite some pretty good gore scenes like a dude having all of his toes cut off one at a time. There are also a lot of lengthy clips from some black and white movies that I didn't recognize and I had to look into. There's so many of those moments that if they were cut out, the movie would probably be just around an hour long. It's all just unnecessary filler. The kills are all this movie has going for it. Not a script and for damn sure, not acting. If you watch this movie, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are about it. Did you like this movie? Did you like it at all? Because this thing did not do it for me. It has a few moments, sure, but what movie doesn't? There are a lot of slashers out there who give even better gore and still have good pacing and a fun, likable story. Take Intruder, for instance. I did a review on that a few days ago. Compare this piece of shit to Intruder. I mean, it's not even close, let alone the classics. With a rating of a 3 out of 10, I would just recommend everyone give this thing a pass. Anything this movie does well, you can find much better elsewhere. 
and don't be fooled by the trailer. But that does it for this one, and more videos are on the way. As for this video, if you like it, give it a like. For the channel, if you like what I'm doing here, be sure to subscribe for more content. And with YouTube fucking up how subscriptions work, be sure to hit the bell and click show all notifications to be reminded when new content is available. And if you really love what I'm doing, you can support the channel on Patreon. The link is in the description. But until next time, later everybody.